Today's review, we're going to be doing an Urban Legend double feature as we have a look at the new released Collector's Edition Urban Legend and Urban Legend's Final Cut. The Green Horn. Yes, we're going to be having a look at both films. Both have already been released to store shelves. November 20th, 2018 to be exact. Both of these come to us from the folks over at Scream Factory who finally got the chance to release Urban Legend, which so happens to be one of my all-time favorite horror films. Yes, it actually makes my top 10 horror films. One of these days, I, I think I might have already done a top 10 favorite horror films, but uh, if I haven't, or if it certainly needs an updating, I probably will end up doing it soon. But you'll probably still find Urban Legend. I always want to see, I always want to add an S to the end of that. Urban Legend is still one of my all time favorite films. It came out near the late 90s, sort of near the end, just before we got into the 2000s, and it certainly followed the Kevin Williamson formula, who I believe actually wrote this one the same way as he wrote The Screams, and I know what you did last summer, and I'm trying to think of the other ones that he had done. Soul Survivor, I think he had done one, and Faculty. Um, needless to say, though, this is one of my all-time favorite, and uh, then there was the follow-up Urban Legends, which felt the need to add the S to the end of it. This was the final cut, which wasn't as good, but I have to say that I've enjoyed it more so watching it in later viewings than when I initially did watch it. So Urban Legend, Urban Legend, initially did come out in a DVD release. I think it was, this was also a film that I would saw about five times in the theater when it was coming out. I loved it that much. But I have the original DVD copy of Urban Legend. It happened to someone who knows someone you know. You're next. Now, this one uh, didn't have much. It had very bare minimal amount of features. It had interactive menus, okay. Uh, filmmaker's commentary, making a featurette, which actually the making of featurette wasn't terrible at, at the time. Yes, 1998. Theatrical trailer, scene selections, widescreen and full screen formats. I must have watched this film on this format probably a good dozen, maybe two dozen times even. It did theoretically get released as a Blu-ray copy, so this isn't necessarily the first time that Urban Legend has made its way to Blu-ray, but the Blu-ray release of this was a super expensive. It went, went out of distribution really fast, and ch checking it out on Amazon, if you were to find the original Am uh, Urban Legend on Blu-ray, you'll probably see that it goes, probably has dropped now, but it was going at one point for about 80 to $85 just for the Blu-ray. So ultimately, I did pass with the hopes, praying to the tops there, the skies, that we would eventually get ourselves a Blu-ray copy. And thank goodness for the folks over at Scream Factory finally gave us Urban Legend on true Blu-ray, like true ar new artwork, everything else going on that only Scream Factory could do. This is a two-disc set, includes the new extensive interviews with director Jamie Blanks, cast, crew, and much more. I felt the need to keep this on just to tell you but this sticker is not going to stay on very long. The artwork is that good. I'm going to peel the sticker right off, make sure there's no goop all over it, and I will discard it and never speak of it again. Urban Legend is one of those slasher films that has a wonder and delight to it. It basically plays to exactly the title that you would imagine, that the killer kills people based on urban legends. So if you are fairly familiar with urban legends, not that you necessarily have to be, basically the killer kills people based on that. And uh, some of the deaths are actually quite clever. I, I liked a lot of them actually that were in this film. And it has an interesting twist, which I won't tell you about. But I will say that it is a fun, fun film. I enjoy this more than I enjoy Scream and more than I enjoy, I, enjoy, uh, I know what you did last summer. In fashion of what we normally get from Scream Factory, luckily they have given us a brand new cover which features the hooded uh, parka killer. They don't really actually give it a name because we already know there's going to be somebody inside there that's going to get the reveal, but we get ourselves brand new artwork 
and I love this artwork. I, I kind of wish they could have done the exact same, something new for Urban Legends Final Cut, but I can certainly understand. It's not really considered by many a superior or even really an enjoyable sequel that they probably didn't bother to make the artwork for it. But this one has the brand new art sleeve cover. We can take that off. You're treated to the exact same thing on the inside. You can open that up. On the one side, you've got your feature film. On the other side, you've got yourself your special features. And like other previous releases, if you open it up, you're treated to, in fact, the same cover as what we got right here. There was also a European poster, I believe, that showed a much larger image of the Parka Killer. Um, here, though, you're still given the same feature options as what is featured on the other side here. Um, but it, uh, again, you have the option of going either or. Sometimes what I usually will find myself doing, if you do benefit from getting a sleeve cover, I think Scream Factory only releases so many copies in the, in the sleeve cover, and then later on the uh, anything else that's distributed sometimes doesn't have that. So what I usually will do is I'll flip it around, and then I'll put it inside the new sleeve. So I get the benefit of having the original poster, which I actually had in my room in high school, if you could believe that. And then you have the original sleeve or the new artwork sleeve over top of that. Okay, so for features, well actually we'll do a quick read up on the back of the cover here. When New England college student Natalie, played by Alicia Witt of TV's The Exorcist, finds herself at the center of a series of sadistic murders seemingly inspired by urban legends, she resolves to find the truth about her school's own legend, a 25-year-old story of a student massacre at the hands of an abnormal psych professor. As the fraternities prepare to celebrate the macabre anniversary, Natalie discovers that she is the focus of the crazed killer's intentions in the ultimate urban legend, the unfolding story of her own horrific murder. Just a little side note, by the way, Urban Legends was, I believe, filmed in Toronto at uh, one of the universities there. Disc 1 features new audio commentary with director Jamie Blanks, producer Michael McDonald, and assistant director Edgar Pablos. Audio commentary with Jamie Blanks, writer Sylvia Horta, and actor Michael Rosenbaum, who you probably will know from Smallville. Uh, he was the Lex Luthor in Smallville and also provided the voice of Flash in the Justice League animated cartoon. Uh, there's also the theatrical trailer, but then disc two is where you get knee deep into the more meat potatoes of it all. You get a brand new feature length documentary on the making of Urban Legend featuring new interviews with Jamie Blanks, actors Rebecca Gayhart, who was also in Beverly Hills 90210. He, she was the mob daughter that fell in love with Dylan McKay. I'm saying too much. Shouldn't admit that. Loretta Devine, Tara Reid, Michael Rosenbaum, new Robert England, and Danielle Harris. Sylvia Horta as well as the ex executive producer Brad Luff, producers Neil H. Uh, Horries, Horitz, and Gina Matthews, and many more. There's also never-before-seen uh, scenes, footage, and archival making of featurettes. So you get a good packed amount of stuff. Usually whenever a Scream Factory delves back into the archives and is able to re-release classics like this, yes, I do consider this to be a classic, they always try to find a way to go back and, you know, interview old cast and, uh, you know, actors and stuff like that, and I'm glad they've done that for this one. Um, in addition to that, I do find, like, the picture quality is a, a noticeable difference. Like, if you were to play the two side by side, I do find that the picture quality is better, being that this is also on a Blu-ray format. That is Urban Legend. One of my personal favorites falls within easily my top 10, possibly even my top five. It's, it's that good. Just, there you go. And as a side note as well, I hope that Scream Factory can go back and give us other classic, I say classic, but for me, this is the, the time in which I flourished as a horror fan. I was going to every, every theater uh, when these movies were coming out, you know, again, you know, all the screams, all the I know what you did last summer, I still know what you did last summer, Soul Survivor, Faculty, you name it, all the stuff that was coming out at that time, those slasher films, kind of like the resurgence of slasher films, which happens to be my favorite genre of the genre of horror, I was watching it, and Urban Legends definitely is one of the top of the list. Even if you don't add an S, sometimes I say by accident, Urban Legends, but the original, no S. Sans le S. Then you had Urban Legends, where we decided to add an S. This was Urban Legends Final Cut, Legends Never Die. And much like the original, 
Urban Legend. I also so happened to get Urban Legend Final Cut on DVD. This was the only way that you could get this, and I, I honestly thought this was the way we would ever see this movie was in DVD format. Sometimes certain horror movies, they just never make it to Blu-ray, so I'm glad that Scream Factory, for giving us Urban Legend, also decided to give us Urban Legend's Final Cut. It is a shame, however, that they didn't give us brand new artwork. I would have just lavished the fact that we could have got brand new artwork featuring the, uh, I don't know what killer you would call this, sort of like a, a jousting, sparring kind of little face guard. It was a silly looking killer. He had a neat looking face, but then when you kind of looked at him from a distance, uh, you know, the killer traveling through corridors and the light hitting it a certain way, the killer did kind of look a little silly by having the light reflecting off of it. Anyways, the read-up on this one, the making of the horror movie, takes a terrifying reaction to students at the most prestigious film school in the country in Urban Legend's Final Cut, the suspenseful follow-up to the smash hit Urban Legend. Yes, in case you were wondering, theoretically, in some ways, it is a sequel to this one. Although it only hints at the the what happens in the original, and one of the characters that is in the original Urban Legend also makes, you know, is also in this one as well. So there's a nice connection between the two. At Alpine University, someone is determined to win the best film award at any cost, even if it means eliminating the competition. No one is safe and everyone is a suspect. Urban Legend's final cut is an edge-of-your-seat thriller that will keep you guessing until the shocking climax. Jennifer Morrison, who was also in Amityville The Awakening, uh, Matthew Davis, below. Joseph Lawrence from Rest Stop, he was also in Blossom. Eva Mendez of Ghost Rider, and Anthony Anderson in Scream 4, Hart Bachner from Die Hard. Ah, yes. <laughs> he was also in Supergirl as well. And Loretta Devine from Urban Legend. There's the, uh, the tie-in from the original. Now this one, if you look at this and you look at the original release, the original release had a making of featurette, gag reels, website links, theatrical trailers, talent files, interactive menus, production notes, sc uh, scene selections, and of course all the other stuff like deleted scenes, director's commentary, subtitles, and more. This one here has new interviews with actors Loretta Devine, Jessica Colfield, Rebecca Gayhart, producer Gina Matthews, urban legend writer Sylvia Horta, and Phoenix Pictures chairman, CEO, Mike Medavoy, and more. There's also audio commentary where direct director uh, John Ottman deleted scenes with optional commentary by John Ottman and making a featurette, gag reel, and theatrical trailer. So basically everything that was in the original standard DVD release makes its way also to this one as well. And just in case you are wondering, because there isn't technically brand new artwork, what you are treated to inside it instead is uh, two girls. They're walking through the caution tape line. There's Eva Mendez. Eva Mendez. Now, I will say, as I had mentioned at the beginning of this video, I wasn't a big fan, in all honesty, of Urban Legends Final Cut. There's a little bit of plastic. I'll just take that right off. When I saw it in theaters, I didn't, I didn't like it as much as the first one. That still holds true. I'm not a big fan of this one as much as I was a fan of the first one. There's also Urban Legends Bloody Mary, which has no connection whatsoever to either one of these films. Maybe one day down the road we may get ourselves a Blu-ray release of that, but if we don't, I'm not going to lose a whole lot of sleep over that. Urban Legends, though, after I'd watched it, I didn't like it. But then when I watched it recently, I have to admit that I enjoyed it a lot more than I did the first viewing. I may have only seen this film probably like four times over the span of its existence. Urban Legend, on the other hand, I've seen that at least ten times more and probably will still continue to watch it more. Urban Legend's Final Cut is sort of, sort, certainly one of those films that I would go to only after watching the first one. I may feel nostalgic for it. Or recently, I popped this into the Blu-ray player solely because it had been so long since I watched the first this first viewing of it that I wanted to watch it again. And it was actually during that second go around that I enjoyed it a lot more than the first or the first viewing of it. The kills aren't as interesting. It doesn't have as much the appeal or the passion for it that the first one has, where I feel like the kills in the first one is a little bit more interesting. This one I sort of just sort of just plays to the environment than it does anything else. Um, the killer, like I said, is rather 
interesting in it in the design of it but I find certain lighting hits it and it looks a little on the silly side because it's basically like this long I don't even want to say trench coat it's almost like this long suit that it wears other than really just kind of looks like also Cobra Commander from G.I. Joe um, it's definitely not one of the more intriguing looking costumes but I'll give it to them that they came up with something creative and something different same as to be said for Urban Legends the Parka Killer, it really was unique because it could be something that anybody could wear. You could see anybody, especially on a cold day, wearing a parka like this. And it does play into that a little bit in the film. This one is certainly unique. You know right off the bat, there's something, something is a foul when you see somebody walking around fully dressed like this and wearing the visor, the, uh, the sparring uh, guard over their head. Still, it's not one of the better of the sequels. But it's definitely something that I think deserves going back and watching again. Of the two, clearly my favorite is Urban Legend, Sans Le S's. But then Urban Legends, of course, had the S. Um, either of which are a good pickup if, honestly, you only had the available time and resources to watch one. Hands down, I would say watch Urban Legend. The original is the best by far. Urban Legends plays a very distant second. Bloody Mary, I would just not even watch at all. Uh, it certainly makes me hopeful that Scream Factory will continue the trend of releasing the late 90s horror films to Blu-ray, hopefully giving it the same artwork treatment that we got with Urban Legend. One thing I would love to see, even though there is technically a Blu-ray copy of Faculty, I'd love to see them re-release facu Faculty in the new, brand new art slip sleeve, the sliding sleeve that we've got on here either way if you guys are interested in either one of these these are now currently available in stores the release date for these were november 20th 2018 again a big thank you to scream factory for sending these my way i think what had happened was with the post service our post office service uh, canada post and all that stuff i think they're striking their on again off again on again off again here in canada so as a result some of my mail has delayed and that why that's why i uh, we're only looking at these now recently after they've been released normally I, I try to get these videos up before they come out so that you guys can see what up and coming titles are coming out from the folks over at scream factory needless to say in this video we were looking at not one but two urban legend films one had no s one had an s and then there was bloody murph uh, bloody mary which you can completely forget about it wasn't it wasn't very good at all it was it was pretty weak weak sauce it was pretty weak sauce if you guys have checked out either one of these films let me know down below what you think of them do you like urban legend would you where would you put urban legend in your all-time favorite films would it be making your top 10 interested in always discussing horror films with you guys down below as horror films is my meat and potatoes it is the passion that i enjoy watching and genre wise it's always the films that i usually go to above all else I'll usually watch a horror film long before I watch action or thriller, even though technically either one of these could be considered as a thriller as well. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? We're going to have a look at some more upcoming titles from the folks over at Scream Factory in some coming videos, so stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.